amateur. One of the biggest moments of his career in Belfast, England. Had over 100 amateur fights. You know, Jermaine Taylor's defense in this fight has been excellent, and you could easily overlook that. He has blocked a lot of punches, slipped punches, and made it very hard for Frotz to hit him. Under a minute to go in the fourth round. Taylor. Very relaxed through four so far. You know, Jermaine Taylor has not scored a knockout since 2005, which is a, a fairly long drought. Now, during that time, he's fought nothing but champions or former champions. So he's had a, a tremendous, you know, uh, tremendously good list of opponents in front of him. Hey, don't watch that elbow. Keep that elbow in. Uppercut blocked by Frotch. Let him out. Let him out. Step back. Step back. Under 10 seconds to go in the fourth round. Scheduled for 12. Frotch Taylor. And they are banging. Time. You've got to block his right jab, all right? You understand me? You've got to work the jab and you've got to block his jab and that right over the top. So you've got to have the gloves up. Put your legs out. Listen, listen. You've had a bad start, but now you're into the groove with this jab. But you've got to put your stuff together. One, two up, little movements. Double jab right hand and back him up when you can, but just don't force it. Okay? Yeah. He tries the uppercut, Carl Frotch. He leaves himself open now. He will throw this uppercut and get countered with a strong jab by Jermaine Taylor. Remember when we did the keys to victory? We showed you with Frotch hurting an opponent with that left That's uppercut. Doing, this right? time he tries the same thing and got countered. Jab, bust him with the jab and the right hand left hook is off it when it's there. Don't force anything. Don't load up with nothing. Unofficially. Press row scoring, Chris Gibbons, Nal Hickman, and Jack Obermeyer. And I have it 40-35 for Jermaine Taylor. So I agree with the one score. Round five, scheduled for 12. The WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Carl Frotch in the black and red trunks. Jermaine Taylor in the black, red, white, and blue trunks. Taylor knocking down Frotch in the third round. Taylor establishing his jab as we start the fifth. It's been wicked. He's been working on angles, doing a nice job stepping off the line, making Frotch miss. And Gus, they want him to do even more of that. They told him in the corner to get out of the pocket quicker. They don't want him standing right in front of Frotch even a little bit. Well, that was a hellacious left hook, although Frotch just thought it was low. Now Frotch goes to the body. Ozell Nelson telling Jermaine Taylor that he wants him to sit down on his punches, especially when he goes inside, meaning bend his knees and really stick that left hook in the Frotch. They worked on it in the gym a lot during camp. Jermaine Taylor telling us that he's recommitted himself to boxing. He missed the spotlight. He missed being a world champion. During the Lacey fight, at the press conference, he said there were only two cameras there, and those were throwaways. <laughs> and at the press conference at Gallagher Steakhouse in New York earlier this week, it was jam-packed. Media sources from all around the world, and he said, this is what I want to get back to. Well, so far in this fight, he's doing it, although Frotz is having a little bit better round five, but fighting a purposeful, effective fight. Jab very effective for Taylor. In the fifth round, he's been doubling it up. Wait, let him up, let him up. You know, big issue in this match is hand speed. Carl Frotch just has been a smidge slower than Jermaine Taylor, and that's that's why he's missing those right hands that he throws. Taylor's been able to slip them. Hey, hey, guys, listen up on the break. Listen up, all right? Say break, step back, step back. By Jermaine Taylor, although Mike Ortega tells him to keep him up. Looks like they were right on the belt line. Here's one of the rare combinations from Carl Frotch. When he punches in combination, he's much more effective, of course.
But the question is, is Carl Frotch laying in the weeds and waiting for this fight to evolve to see where Taylor is conditioning-wise, if he can go 6 through 12 with the same kind of intention. That body. Right. Both sides. And come out on the side. Don't pop up back up in the middle. Both sides. Back up to his head. Step over to the side. Okay. The same how you did. You jab. Jermaine Taylor going downstairs with a big left hook that landed. Well, that one did land below the belt line, as you can see. So that one. I think Carl Frotch had a case that that one landed a little low. I don't think it was intentional by Taylor. He was just trying to go to the body, but it did end, land a smidge low. Jermaine Taylor, the former undisputed middleweight champion of the world, moving up to 168 from 160. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. All right, Carl, let's keep it clean. Let's go. First title defense. Taylor telling us that after losing to Kelly Pavlik twice, he had to sit down reevaluate his career and what came out was that he wanted something again he wanted to be a world champ and back in the in the back of his mind remember when he told us al in the darkest part of his mind he wants kelly pavlik again because he feels that he's better than kelly pavlik and he can beat him if given another opportunity that's one of those challenges still out there and many wondered if he would be up Nice jab by uh, Taylor as a counterpunch. Many wondered, could Jermaine Taylor be hungry again? Uh, he said, I'm hungry to win a title, and I think the other thing he's hungry for is to try and beat Pavlik. Now, they told uh, Frotch in his corner to use the jab, the one-two, and be busier, and he's having a hard time doing those things. Taylor, oh, wow. wise right hand by Frotch. That's Another his right hand by Frotch. And that backs up Taylor. That's as good a right hand, I think, as Carl Frotch can throw. Remember, Frotch has been down. He went down in the third round as Taylor scored a right hand to drop the world champion. Sixth round, though, scheduled for 12. Both fighters exchanging stiff jab. You know, they, Robert McCracken, Shows you why he's a good trainer. He told Frotch to throw the jab, the straight right hand, and by golly, he did it and it worked. Frotch now finding a rhythm. He looks like his confidence is starting to grow. He's found his range. Taylor coming over the top. Now, Frotch may or may not be winning this round, though there's time still to do it, but he's certainly having his best round of the fight, I think. I would agree. Under a minute to go in round number six. And you just wonder, in the back of Taylor's mind, is he saying, can I get through 12? Do I have the gas? Let's go. Step, step back. And, and Gus, uh, you and I both were struck with his honesty about past fights in which he said, I, it was in my mind every second. And here we are in round six, and there's a slight discernible difference in which Frotch is doing better. Haunting memories for Jermaine Taylor. Now, it's the fact, it's the foul, it's the foul. Now watch your head, watch your head inside, both of you guys. Round six, a much closer round. Could go either way. Left hook by Frotch, connecting. He blocks Taylor's jab. Taylor, nice work at the end of the round. Still got to get some body work inside. So that whole, you don't have to hold, you don't have to stay out there with. He the one that's getting busted up. I just, how'd you like that? Come uh, down, left foot. Yeah. Yeah. See you right there? Yes, sir. Okay, double that right hand next time you hit him with that right hand. Double it. Yes, sir. One more time, done it. Yes, sir. Carl Frotch finally was able to get the right hand, and the jab sets up that very good straight right hand. 
Taylor took this punch very well. I mean, this is a beauty. And again, the jab, the key to that punch landing. And at the end of the round, Jermaine Taylor trying to rally as they both exchange kind of a wild punches. Halfway through this title fight, the champion Carl Frotch needs to rally if he wants to keep his belt. Frotch in the black and red trunks, Jermaine Taylor in the black, red, white, and blue trunks. And remember, Frotch was down in round three. And if there is a criticism of Jermaine Taylor that he, it'd be hard for him to dispute, it is that he is not a great finisher. He has knocked people down among his upper echelon opponents, but not been able to finish them. And so